Hi everyone. This is the first in a series of videos titled Getting Started at Flexible Blended Teaching. Now it's what I call a lean approach because I believe that lectures are very short of time and there's an 80-20 rule at play here which is that 20% uh, of your effort can get you 80% of the impact. You know there are certain key things that you can do to get a lot of impact and if we keep it lean, you will get good value for your time. Now, this video is being recorded during the COVID-19 crisis of 2020. Uh, the objectives for a lot of people teaching on campus are to reduce contact, maybe to teach people that are both on campus or off campus, and to be ready for change at any time. However, a lot of the teaching models that we develop at this time may be useful in the future as well or we may move towards those so hopefully these this set of videos will have a a slightly longer life okay as i said this is the first in a set of videos and really what i'm looking at this video is an overview of what we want to achieve and the core model that i'm going to recommend okay so your objectives with this set of video are what is it that i want to do and then what skills do I need? These videos don't go into specific packages, but they do mention the technique that you will have to learn in a particular package or platform that you have available to you. So I could say that today, if you watch all these videos or whenever you watch them all, you'll figure out what it is that you're trying to achieve and you'll identify the tools and techniques. Now I would say take notes on that write them down what is it you want to achieve and what are the tools you've got to learn because you may need to go and find out how to learn those that'll be next you'll need to find the learning resources if you're in an institution that has plenty of support that'll be great then you need to practice them and i would say as well create these little cheat sheets often you'll get long instructions on how to do a particular task when you go back to do that task the next time, you, it's hard to find the key things in the long instruction. So just write little cheat, sheet, cheat sheets with keywords to remind you what to do. Okay, now before we go through the set of videos, there are some. There is one particular tool, or you could say it's a it's an amalgam of a lot of tools called the Virtual Learning Environment or Learning Management System. I want us to be clear what that is when I use that term. So it's called a VLE or virtual learning environment in Ireland and the UK. A lot of other countries call it a learning management system, LMS. This is typically Moodle, Blackboard, a lot of you will have heard of those, Canvas, Brightspace. Also Google provides a tool called Classroom that's used in a lot of secondary schools. Uh, and Microsoft Teams is being used as a learning management system, even though it's not really and is missing a lot of features that you would like to see. Now, what are these this VLE used for? Well, for starters, it's used as a repository for content. In fact, a lot of people say it's a pity that that's all lectures use for it. They just put their content up there. But it is very useful for that. These are documents maybe that you have that you would normally give as handouts, Word, PowerPoint. PDF, images, whatever, uh, but also linked to external resources. And I'm sure a lot of lectures are moving that way, that you're finding out that there are great resources out there on the web. And you can use the virtual learning environment to give the students the links to these. There could be documents. And also links to even live meetings if you're having a live session with students. But there are links to elsewhere on the web. Now, the second thing that it's used for is communication between you and your students and between the students and each other. So you might have a news or an announcements forum where you post a message and it gets distributed out to the email of the students. Or some or question and answer forum where the students can answer, ask questions and you can answer them or even let the other students answer them. Now, those would be called asynchronous uh, communication tools because everybody does not have to be online at the same time. You can post a question, somebody can come along later and answer it. And that is to be distinguished from synchronous or live communication tools. These are tools where you go on live, uh, uh, people can answer you immediately. You see, um, conferencing tools or meeting tools are like Zoom or Microsoft Teams, Adobe Connect, things like that. They're synchronous. So be aware of the distinction between a synchronous tool and an asynchronous tool. And virtual learning environments rarely provide the synchronous tool. Sometimes they're so tightly integrated that you would barely notice it, but it's usually a separate tool.
Okay, the other thing that a virtual learning environment is used for is assessment and giving grades and giving feedback. These could be assignments that you put up there, uh, requirements for something to students to do, and a Dropbox where they can put things and you can give them feedback later. Or it could be just quizzes that they take and automatically grades them. Okay, now, now this set of videos, I want to be driven by what we feel the students need. So I would say we need the student, we need to ensure that the students have the following. They need guidance as they work through a module. They need clarity of what's required of them. Okay. They need to the facility to interact with you, the instructor or lecturer. They need the facility to in interact with their classmates, particularly if they're off campus. If they're not on campus. You may have some on, some off. Okay. They must have the suitable content. In other words, where are the learning materials? Okay, they're either there in the virtual learning environment or you're pointing. They need the content. They should have activities. It's good for them to be asked to do things that will reinforce and check their understanding. And they really need feedback on their performance. Okay, now the model. The model that I'm going to recommend is called the flipped classroom. Okay, now if you've heard of flip before and you don't think it suits you, don't panic because I'm going to say aim for this, but don't be afraid to steer away from it. I'm going to give you a core model. I'm going to give you some options during these videos. Okay, uh, the options, if you take some of the options in the end, it would not be technically a flipped classroom. It may be more to your liking though, so that's fine. So what is this flipped classroom? Well, the students in the flipped classroom, the idea is that in a traditional, they come to class, they get the content, and then they go off home and do their homework. Whereas in the flipped classroom, they, they get their content before coming to class. It may be a lecture, a recorded lecture, whatever. Anyway, they get the content before and they come to the classroom prepared and ready to do activities. These are the reinforcement activities in the class. These could be problems or discussions. We're going to go into the details of these in a later video, but before we do, I'd like to, you to think about what a typical week might look like in this flexible blended learning. Now, I have a diagram that's going to emerge here, and so far on this diagram, I have our campus learner on one hand and our remote learner on the other hand. Now, I've put headphones on the campus learner. That's for a good reason, I'll tell you now. Okay, now the first thing you would do would be you would post a weekly message online. It's very important that students be clear about what's going on. Then you would deliver content to them. Now, the deliver might not be the right word. If you've content prepared uh, or you've found it on the web, what you might do is release the content for them, okay? So they can't see it until a specific date. That could be a recorded lecture or other materials that you have found. Now, they, they take the content, they do a certain amount of study, and then they have to turn up for what we call in the classroom for a tutorial. Now, as we say, we may have students that are on campus and may have students that are off campus. Uh, some people uh, are proposing that we should use what's called the high flex model for this, which is that we're in a classroom and we've got great equipment and we can broadcast to the online students as well. To be honest with you, you need ec excellent equipment to do that. And most of us are not going to have that equipment in our classroom, maybe in the future when you're watching this video at some stage. Um, so I would suggest maybe you're better to split them into two shorter tutorials, take the face-to-face -face people and online people separately. Now, some of you may have noticed that there's a couple of gaps in there. Of course there is. And that's because the students need to turn up prepared for the tutorials. So I would say is you give them something to do, even something as simple as a quiz that they take. And that quiz dis disappears before the tutorial. They would get grades for it. So give them something to do and submit some evidence that they've engaged with the content. While they're doing this, they may, re may require support. Okay. Now, in a way, I've just put that support in there. That would be a time that they might need support when they're preparing for that quiz or something like that. But to be honest with you, they need support maybe continuously. And we'll talk about that later. So it spans the whole of the week, as it were. And then on to the next week. Now, I should say something about this week before I move on, is that this doesn't have to follow the Monday to Monday week or Monday to Friday. In fact, it might be better off if it didn't. I don't know when you are going to get allocated time to do your face-to-face -face tutorial, your online tutorial. It might be on a Monday, so they have to do this before that. In fact, I would almost say that 
Ideally, you would post your weekly outline and release your content before the weekend because then maybe that gives them things to be doing on the weekend. So it's not necessarily a Monday to Friday. It can be any any time, a week starting on any day of the week, we'll say. Okay, so now the next video is going to cover communication. And thank you for listening.